Hey YouTube, this is Tom at TM Aquatics and I hope everyone's doing great. Now it's no secret that I keep a lot of expensive plecos and some high-end Corydoras here in my fish room at TM Aquatics. And on each one of my colony tanks, I like to use an additional piece of equipment called a temperature controller. Specifically, I've been using the Inkbird 306 and the Inkbird 308. I have a total of 14 of them here in my fish room, split pretty evenly between those two models. There are some unique differences between the two controllers, and we'll talk about those differences a little bit later on in this video. But recently, Inkbird came out with a new temperature controller, the 929A, and they asked if they sent me one, would I be willing to do an unboxing and a review of the new controller? Well, absolutely, I'm always interested, especially when there's some new features on here that I think are gonna help the hobbyists. First of all, this is a smart temperature controller. It has Wi-Fi capabilities and comes with an app that you can keep on your phone. So you're always gonna know what's going on with your fish tank even when you're not home. So absolutely, I'm interested and that's gonna be the primary focus of this video. But anyways, I hope everyone sticks around and checks this one out. All right, YouTube, now I know one of the first questions people are gonna have is what exactly is a temperature controller? And without getting too deep into the weeds, we're gonna try to keep this as simple as possible. A temperature controller is just simply another device that can control the flow of electricity to your aquarium heater, either turning it on or off. The temperature controller itself is set at a temperature that you want your fish tank to be maintained at. A thermometer or probe is placed inside of your aquarium. When the aquarium water reaches that desired temperature, it shuts down the circuit and prevents any more electricity from flowing to your heater, therefore turning it off. When your temperature in the tank goes down to a certain low value, it'll complete the circuit, allow electricity to turn your heater back on, thus start heating your tank back up. So the next question is gonna be, do I need a temperature controller on my aquarium or in my fish room? And to answer that, you're gonna to have to do it yourself. Now, I wouldn't call temperature controllers controversial, but there are those that don't want another piece of equipment in their fish room that can fail, while others, like myself, I like the additional peace of mind and the redundancy. Now, we can take this one step further. I don't think anybody's gonna argue that the best and safest way to heat an aquarium is to heat the room. But that just simply isn't an option for everybody. In my fish room here, I have 35 tanks, but I have shrimp that like the temperature around 71 to 72 degrees, Corydoras that like the temperatures anywhere from 70 to 75, and I have some exotic plecos from the Rio Zingu that like the temperatures as high as 86 degrees. So any way you look at it, for me at least, here at TM Aquatics, I'm gonna have to use some heaters. And because I use heaters, I wanna have heater controllers. Here's another reason why. So the reasons that I like using temperature controllers is pretty simple. I like the additional peace of mind. It would require two pieces of equipment to fail simultaneously in order to cook my fish. The other reason I like using temperature controllers, well, it's pretty simple. There aren't any good heaters on the market that I trust or can put all my stock in. I've had heaters of all brands and all manufacturers fail. Eheim, Cobalt, Aquion, it doesn't matter. I have every type of heater here in the fish room and I've had them all fail at one point or another. Temperature controllers just give me additional peace of mind and I know that as long as both pieces of equipment don't fail at the same time and the odds of that happening are pretty slim to none, well, my, my fish aren't gonna be cooked. My fish room maintains a temperature between 70 to 75. So worst case scenario, well, my zebra plecos are gonna be chilly a little bit but nobody here at TM Aquatics is gonna cook. All right, so enough talking about temperature controllers. Let's go ahead and take a look at some temperature controllers, starting out with the Inkbird 306 and the Inkbird 308. All right, now the primary purpose of this video was to do an unboxing and a review of the new Inkbird 929A temperature controller. But before we get to this and dig into this box here, I want to take a look at the current controllers that I use in the fish room, the Inkbird 306, which is here, and the Inkbird 308, and talk about a couple of differences between those two units in case you're considering either the 306 or the 308. And we'll start out with the 308 here. Now, one of the main features of the Inkbird 308 is that this has an audible alarm. So you can set a high temperature 
and you can set a low temperature and if either one of those values is reached it's going to set off an audible alarm. Now the alarm itself is not very loud and that's one drawback and I wish they'd make the alarm a little louder than it is. It's loud enough that if you're one or two rooms away you're probably going to hear it. But like me my fish room is in the lower level of my house and if I'm upstairs I'm not going to hear it. Now with the Inkbird 308 on the plug here it only has one plug for a heater and the other one would be used for a cooler or a chiller which well let's be honest most people don't use chillers on aquariums but from what I understand they do use these with home brewing and maybe that's something that people use when they brew stuff I don't know the Inkbird 306 does not have an audible alarm and the plug here those are both for heaters so if you're like me and you like to use two smaller heaters to heat your tanks versus one larger heater then this is probably going to be a pretty good option for you but now whichever version or model you get the 306 or the 308 just make sure you get the model with the new aquarium safe probe now when i started buying these originally they had a metal probe and i had a couple of those probes fail sending a false reading to the controller and the temperature in my tanks were off by about three or four degrees. I reached out to Inkbird and they advised me that those metal probes were never designed to be submerged in water for any lengthy periods of time. Now with that said, they were in the process of developing a new aquarium safe probe and when they, when they manufactured those new probes, they sent me a whole bunch of them. I was able to swap them out. It's now been about a year and a half or two years and I've never had an issue with the new aquarium safe probe. But enough on the Inkbird 308 and the 306. Let's go ahead and dig into this box here and check out the new Inkbird 929A. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and open up this box for the new Inkbird 929A temperature controller. On top, pretty standard for Inkbird packaging. They always put a warranty card on top there. Looks like a manual. We're going to definitely need to uh, check this out because I've never used this unit before. We'll have to figure out how it works and how to set it up. Here we have the, the module itself, which is quite a bit smaller than uh, the Inkbird 306 and the 308. And I'm guessing there's the probes. Let's just take a look at this for a second. Okay, so this plugs in here, but I noticed right away now this has two probes. Now I don't know, but I'm guessing they include two separate probes so that you can space them out in the aquarium so you might get a more accurate average reading. Have them on opposite sides of the tank. I don't know, but hopefully this explains it a little bit more. Now this is, though, the new Aquarium Safe Probe that I was talking about earlier. You want to make sure if you're buying any Inkbird controller that it has one of these black rubber type probes and not one of the metallic probes. But anyways, uh, those are the parts. Looks pretty straightforward. I'm guessing this just plugs into the outlet. The heater plugs in right here. But uh, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to dig through the uh, manual a little bit. We'll probably hook this up on one of the uh, grow out tanks. And um, we'll circle back, see how it's operating, hopefully answer a few questions, and give our initial thoughts. All right, YouTube, I have the new Inkbird 929A plugged in. I have the probes over here in my Lamprologus Ocelotus Gold Shell Dweller tank. You can see one of the probes over here, and then I have the other probe on the left side of the tank. But I now know why there's two probes included with this unit. I'll explain that more when we take a look at the app. So how about if we do that next, open up the app and check that out. All right, before we look at the app, I just wanna take a closer look at the unit itself. There is an LED screen and there's uh, three different numbers on the readout there. And um, those are gonna to correspond to some numbers you're gonna see on the app itself. And then there's three different function buttons there. And we'll go ahead and explain what each one of those buttons are used for. Uh, and we'll just point to it in the manual, but a little hard to get to this unit, the uh, angle that it's at and where it's positioned. So let's go ahead, take a look at the app, take a quick look at the uh, owner's manual, 
answer a couple questions and uh, continue with this video. All right, so one of the key features of this new Inkbird 929A is the fact that it has Wi-Fi capabilities and comes with the Inkbird Smart app. So you're gonna have to download the Inkbird Smart app. And once you have that, you can launch the app. And now you see we have the connected device here, the Inkbird C929A. We'll go ahead and open that device up. And right away, you see this big number in the middle of the screen, along with a couple numbers down below. So what does all this mean? Well, this first big number right here in the middle that draws your eyes to it, that is the current temperature of the tank. And if you notice right underneath the current temperature reading, it says heating. So I know right now the tank is in the process of heating. And what's it, what temperature is it going to heat up to? Well, that's down here. And this is where the two probes come in. I did find out what the purpose of the two probes are. The first probe you're gonna set for the low value. That's the temperature in which you want your tank to drop down to before your heater is turned on. And the second probe is the high value, the maximum temperature you want your tank to be before the heater is shut off. So this is gonna continue to heat until it reaches 78.5 degrees, and then it's gonna shut off. Now down below here, there's some settings. We got a temperature unit switch. You can switch it between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Temperature calibration. If you find that your unit is off by a degree or two, you can open that up and you can plus or minus a degree depending on which probe so that you get a more accurate reading. And then the high temperature and the low temperature. This is really for the alarm. The unit itself has an audible alarm on the base. And then if the alarm goes off, it also sends you an alarm via the smartphone or the application, which is real nice. So you're gonna receive notification whether you're in your fish room or at work or wherever. So you have your high temperature set and your low temperature set. And if either one of those values is hit, then you're gonna get the alarm. All right, so we mentioned earlier that the LED screen had a few numbers showing on it, but it's kind of hard to see where the uh, unit is positioned right now with the camera angles, the lighting, the whole nine yards. But right here is a uh, picture of what the LED screen looks like. There's this big number on the left and that corresponds to the big number that you saw on the app in the middle of that big circle. And then the two numbers on the right, those are the different probe values. You have the low temperature and the high temperature. So pretty much corresponds to what you see on the app itself. The three different buttons that we talked about, the button on the left is the up button and the Wi-Fi connect mode button. The middle button is for settings. And then the button on the right is for the down. Uh, scrolling down. Now I can't even imagine using those buttons since everything can be set and configured off the app. It's much easier to do it on your phone, but it's nice that you have some redundancy here. But anyways, just wanted to explain the buttons and the LED screen. All right, YouTube. Well, I want to go ahead and take a couple of minutes and just talk about the pros and the cons as I see them with this new Inkbird 929A temperature controller. And we'll start out with the good stuff. What I really like about this unit is just how compact it is. It's a much smaller overall unit than the control units on either the Inkbird 308 or the Inkbird 306. And what I really like about this unit is just the cord management. There are no additional cables or cords. You just plug the unit directly into a power strip or an outlet. You plug your heater in. You have your temperature probes right here, and that's it. You don't have all these extra cords and cables like you do with the other Inkbirds, the 306 and the 308. So it just makes for a much cleaner installation. And finally, the Smart App. You can't go wrong with Wi-Fi capability in a Smart App, so you can control the unit, control the temperature in your tank, and get an alarm if something's wrong, whether you're in your fish room or at work. You just can't go wrong with Wi-Fi capabilities and a smart app. Now, what don't I like about it? Well, there's only two things, and they're kind of minor. Uh, for starters, I had a hard time plugging this or finding space here in my fish room with the type of power strips that I have in my fish room. So it's just something to consider. The other thing, you can only plug in one heater. So for someone like me who appreciates, you know, like the Inkbird 306 where I can plug in two smaller heaters, for a large tank versus just one bigger heater well you can't do that on this unit but again not a game changer or a deal breaker overall i think this is definitely a step in the right direction you know the wi-fi capabilities how slick it is how much less space the cord management definitely a step up uh, in the right direction and i don't think you're going to be disappointed if you want to try the inkbird 929a temperature controller
All right, YouTube, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I'd like to hear what you think. If you have any comments or questions, please post them down below. Hit the like button on your way out. And if you haven't already done so, I hope you consider subscribing. Anyways, thanks again for taking time out of your day to watch one of my videos. And until the next one, we'll catch you all later.